In this lesson, we're getting a two for one. Now before we start writing some code to communicate through the I2C interface to the LCD, let's talk about our LCD display. It is a 1602A LCD. And there's a there's a couple of things that would be nice to understand before we start writing code. Specifically, how do you communicate with this display? The display's interface is a lot like a basic memory interface, except that it really only has two addresses, address 0 and address 1. So we have address 0, which is for commands, and address 1, which is to send characters to the display. So we need to have kind of one address line. It's actually called RS for register select. All right. Now, the second thing that we need to do, and if you're familiar at all with memory interfaces, you know about this R read write RW bar type signal. Okay. Now, the way RW bar works is that if it's equal to a one, we are reading. If it's equal to a zero, we're writing. Now, for our particular interface, all we're going to be doing is writing to the display. So this signal should always be a zero. Then also, if you are familiar with uh, memory interfaces, you know about something called a chip select. Now, most of the time, they're active low, which means when it's a zero, we're activating the chip. We're activating that memory. In the case of this E, enable, what we're going to do is write a one to it in order to enable this memory interface, in order to communicate with this LCD display. And then lastly, we have these data lines, DB standing for data bit, right? So we have data bit 7 through 0. So we have a byte that we're communicating with. So these, these lines, these, what do you have, 8 lines there, 9, 10, 11, these 11 lines are what we're going to be using in order to communicate with the LCD display. Now, the way it works is that at some point, and this could be a 1 or a 0, we don't know, at some point we decide that we are going to select. And so we've got a point in time where we decide which one of these registers we're going to select. Are we going to co communicate with a command or are we going to communicate to the character register? Now, uh, something important to understand about this particular display is that when you write a character, what it does is it writes a character at the current cursor position, and then depending on the settings for this, uh, the display, how we configured it, the cursor is either going to increment to the right or increment to the left. Okay, so what we're going to do is register select. If we select a character, we're going to write to that character register. If we set a zero, we're going to write to the command register. Now, the read write, understand that once again, we are writing all the time. So we are going to set that to a zero. Doesn't necessarily need to be a one. In fact, we could just simply always write zero to it. Never have to worry about it. It's the enable that's going to store data to this LCD display. So we are going to write to the display uh, with a zero on the W bar sig on the RW signal. All right, and then the enable. After a specific period of time, and we'll talk about this when we start coding, after these signals have stabilized for a moment, we are going to bring the enable high. And what that's going to do is it is going to start the storing of whatever is on the data bits into either the character register or the command register. And then at some point, we're going to lower that guy. And after we've lowered it, you have to keep RS and RW and the data stable for the period of time at, from going from the enable equal to a one to the enable equal to a zero. But after that, you know, after you wait a certain period of time, you can go ahead and bring the read write bar signal up if you need to. Like I said, we're just going to be leaving it as a zero. And then you can also release the RS and the, uh, the RS line to whatever level you want. Now, let's talk about the data. Now, specifically in the data sheet, it says that you can wait until after you've already enabled the chip to set DB and uh, DB7 through 0. But we are just going to go ahead, and at the same time that we set RS and R, RW, we're just going to go ahead and set our values for the data bits, all right? Just as long as they are valid whenever E bar goes low, or excuse me, whenever E goes low, because it's an active high signal. 
All right. Now, this talks about, in general, how we write to the display. But we're not writing to the display through a, a generic memory interface. We're writing to it through our I2C interface. Let's talk about that. Now for the basic wiring. As I said before, whenever you're looking at the LCD interface, what you've got is our data bits. So we've got D7, D6, D5, D4, D3, D2, D1, D0. So there's our byte, all right? Then we also have the enable, which remembers that active high signal that clocks the data in. And then we've got read, write, and then we've got register select, all right? Now it turns out that the display actually has an additional, a 12th connection, and this is for the backlight. It does not go directly to the circuitry of the LCD, but it does turn on the backlight. Now what we've got communicating to it is this I2C to parallel adapter. All right. Now, coming in on this side is the I2C or the I squared C interface that we have been talking about before. So there's really just two wires, a third if you count ground. So we have our serial data and then we have our serial clock. Remember that it's a synchronized uh, interface. Now, this I2C to parallel uh, module, it actually has an address that it's looking for on the SDA lines. When it sees that, it's going to take a byte of information and convert it into parallel bits, identified as P0 through P7. So we'll P4, P3, P2, P1, P0, all right? Now, these guys are going to be connected to drive the LCD display. There's a problem though. There's only eight bits here, right? And there's 12 bits to control there. Well, it turns out that the LCD module has a mechanism to handle this. A lot of the times, whenever it comes to embedded system design, you're trying to reduce the pin count. You're trying to reduce the number of bits that have to be communicated over physical wires. So the LCD is actually capable of communicating in a four bit mode. And that four bit mode means that what we're gonna do to transfer a byte to the LCD is we're going to transfer the high half or the high nibble of a character that we're trying to send and then send the low nibble. And that makes it so that we actually do not need these four bits. We're gonna use the high bits, the D4 through D7, as the data input. So we're gonna be using that nibble to pass data back and forth between our processor through the I2C to parallel module into our LCD. So actually these guys, these four pins here, those four data lines there are going to get connected to ground. They're going to be grounded so that they always have zeros. Now, by doing this, whenever we do the configuration for the LCD, it's going to bring it up in four bit mode by default because one of the configuration bits looks for a zero on D3, I believe it is. And if there's a zero there during that particular stage in the configuration, the LCD is going to be put into four bit mode and only pass data through those four bits. Now, P7, P6, P5, and P4 are just connected directly to the, 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 the four data bits, okay? P3, that one is going to control the backlight. If we put a one on P3, then we'll turn on the backlight. A zero on P3 will turn off the backlight. P2 gets connected to the enable. P1 gets connected to read write. And then P0 gets connected to RS. Now remember, P1 should always be a zero because we're always doing a write operation. But we still do have access to that particular bit. So there's the wiring internal. Now all we see is going to be SDA and SCL, which we are going to be connecting to the I squared C bus on our Raspberry Pi. Now, to connect the Raspberry Pi to the LCD display, we need to have three signals, right? We need to have SDA, we need to have SCL, that is our I squared C interface. So there's our data and there is our clock.
we also need a ground reference. And it turns out for this LCD display, we also need to power it with VCC, which should equal five volts. Now, if we look at this header, the pinout for this header, and we see that we've got these 40 pins going along that edge of the connector with this pin being pin one and then pin two, three, four, five, six, and so on. We have all the connections that we need. For VCC, we need to go to pin two. Pin two is a five volt output from the Raspberry Pi. Remember the Raspberry Pi does not actually use five volts. It uses 3.3 volts but we do take the five volt input that comes into our USB power port here, the power supply input, and that gets connected directly to, or through a fuse, to the five volts. Now, for SDA, we are going to use GPIO pin two. This is the Broadcom numbering scheme. And GPIO2, this is for SDA1. Remember that we may have more than one bus on our Raspberry Pi. We are using bus one. And SDA1 for our I squared C comes to GPIO pin or GPIO2, which is actually pin three. So this is going to be connected to the SDA. The pin three of our header is going to be connected to the SDA of our LCD display. Um, for the SCL, this is going to be connected to GPIO pin three. And this is SCL one for the I squared C from the Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna connect that to this pin five. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and then we need a ground. And just to keep things, there are a couple of pins that are connected to ground on the Raspberry Pi. We need to connect ground. We're gonna connect it to pin nine. So we've got a ground coming off of this header from pin nine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we got some wires here. There's our Raspberry Pi. Let's take a closer look at our LCD display. Notice that it has this multi-pin bus input. Like I said before, this is a much this is much like a memory interface where we've got eight data lines, one address line, which we're calling register select here. So we have actually two memory locations and the enable. But the way it's connected on our on our uh, interface to the I squared C is this I squared C to parallel uh, adapter here. This, by the way, is an adjustment for a contrast. And then we have uh, our SCL, our SDA. I don't know if I can point at this any better. SCL, SDA, VCC, and ground. So let's go ahead and connect our ground first. I'm going to take this black connector here, connect it to my ground connection on this adapter board, and that went to pin 9. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that connects to the ground. So our grounds, now they have the same ground. Their grounds are, are connected. And then the next thing I'm going to connect is VCC. I'm going to use this red wire here. So VCC is the next pin, and remember VCC was pin two. So that goes into this upper left, uh, upper right hand pin on the header. Then I'm going to use a yellow wire for SDA. And SDA, if you remember, goes to pin three. So we connect that to pin three on our header. And then lastly, we have our clock that we need. So that's gonna be this blue wire, this blue jumper, and that was connected to pin five. And that is all that is required to interface our Raspberry Pi via the SD, the, the, the I squared C bus one to our LCD display.